We'd like to uh, hear from you next to uh, get your thoughts on what you thought of Donald Trump today and the entire Republican field. The caucus is coming up in Iowa. We have the first in the nation primary in New Hampshire on February 9th as well. Numbers on your screen. Democrats call us at 202-748-8920. If you're a Republican, 202-748-8921. Independence and others, 202-748-8922. Of course, you can uh, tweet us at C-SPAN or leave a post on the C-SPAN Facebook page. A couple of callers been waiting for a while. Let's go right to the phones now. Susan in Statesville, North Carolina on the Republican line. Susan, are you still with us? I am there. I am here. Go ahead. What do you think of Donald right. Trump? What do you think of Donald Trump today? Uh, uh, he, I believe he is expressing what American people have wanted to say for a long, long time. Um, he just touches the heartbeat of, of what so many of us have wanted to say and were not able to say because of um, one of the things he mentioned, the political correctness. And I think it's time that uh, the American people in general are able to say that if someone shoots a policeman or another officer because they were trying to get him to comply with them and, and, if the, and if he gets shot in the midst of that he's a bum we can't say he's a bum anymore we can't we can't say that because we've been told we can be locked up for it well <clears throat> i agree that the policemen and the other officers that we have are just they're just being treated rotten and the Obamacare has done oodles of damage to oodles of people. I'll be retiring in about a year and a half. Um, one of my perks was to have been that I could have um, insurance, 80-20, to go with Medicare for $12.80 a month. As a result of all this stupidity by Obama, I will not have that. Jesus said in the Bible, the poor you'll always have with you. Um, we're not going to fix everything that's poverty, and we're certainly not going to fix it by taking away from pe uh, people who have worked for it. Perhaps some of those people who are bene benefiting from Obamacare, perhaps they're doing that because of perks being taken from me and oodles of other people. So I am absolutely can't wait. Hope the next time that I say Donald Trump's name within a year, I hope I'm saying President Trump. Thank you so much. And thanks for calling. Uh, Debbie, you're uh, on the line for Independence, calling from Old Lyme, Connecticut. Thanks for hanging in there. What do you think? Um, I'm, I'm very impressed by Donald Trump, so I'm going to be voting Republican. I'm, I, I'm more than ha I can't wait for him to be our president. Um, my question is, though, I just want to know what he's going to do with all the entitlements. Um, we seem to hand those out pretty, uh, you know, like candy, and I feel like a lot of people who are on entitlements don't need to be. I work within the system for the state of Connecticut, and it's appalling how much money these people get, you know, on a you know a monthly and yearly basis. So I'm hoping, you know, that he's going to be able to do something about that as well. All right, thanks for calling, Fred, in Clearwater, Florida, Democratic caller. Go ahead. Hey, yes, how you doing, sir? Well. Okay, great. So well, first of all, the young lady Susan, I think her name was called a couple of calls ago about oodles of entitlements being taken well it's called sacrifice so if you want to be great again as donald trump say make that sacrifice now as far as donald trump and his rhetoric about making america great again it's all talk he spoke for an hour with no substance none whatsoever and um i just don't understand how people just buy into that rhetoric i just don't get it for the life of me but this is my challenge for anyone listening, during Obama's presidency, if you've had your employment for the duration of his presidency, how many wages were decreased? How many entitlements were taken? I'm interested in listening to your calls. Thank you. Pat in Lady Lake, Florida, independent caller. Go ahead. Hey, I Hi. want to tell you, 
it's about time we finally have someone who has not been bought by special interest and is free now to do the right thing for our country for a change. Now, this is a change we need, not the change Obama promised us seven years ago that has brought us social disaster. So you can change your sign. We are not, we are now the not-so-silent majority. God bless the USA and, and God bless Trump. Thanks for calling, Pat. Donald Trump uh, in Iowa today, in Muscatine, Iowa. The uh, caucuses in Iowa just uh, a week away from tomorrow. And uh, we'll have uh, live coverage uh, starting on February 1st, 7 p.m. here on uh, C-SPAN. At 8 o'clock Eastern Time here on C-SPAN, we'll join a Republican uh, caucus and uh, take a look at the process on our companion network, C-SPAN 2. We'll be at a Democratic caucus and see how the process works on the Democratic side. So uh, follow our Iowa caucuses coverage coming up a week from tomorrow, Monday, February 1st, on the C-SPAN networks as our Road to the White House coverage continues. Taking a look at uh, a couple of tweets that have come in uh, response to the Trump rally. Uh, this one from C. Adkins, great rally in Muscatine, Iowa. Your unbending attitude will carry you. Susie writes, loved it. Go Trump, Iowa caucus for Trump. Make America great again. This, though, from You're So Chris, what a despicable, disgusting group of racist pigs in Iowa. Absolute trash. Stop hate. There was a protester early on uh, with a uh, stop hate banner. A and this one from Mom of Three who writes, this idiot Trump is saying Cruz hates ethanol. This is not true. He hates government control over ethanol, but Trump's still lying to his followers. A couple of tweets there. We'll go back to the calls. Natalie joins us uh, from Chesterfield, Missouri on the line for Republicans. Hi, Natalie. Hi there. Um, I want to say that I am what I hope is a big majority a, a secret Trump supporter. I do not voice my support because of so many people that I know from, especially from my uh, past where I went to a very liberal East Coast college, would just like be hating my, my support and not understanding it at all. But I come from a place where I am being subversive. That's how I see it. I am tired of, as many have pointed out, the way government has um, just been in the hands of people that are all out for glory for themselves, enriching their own pocketbook and not caring for the good of the majority of the people in this country. And I think that Trump doesn't seem to have any ulterior motives other than helping us all. So I uh, support him. I just wish that he would have more specifics as to what his agenda really is and more specific ideas and plans I want to have those uh, to convince the people that are alarmed by him to know that there really isn't anything that awful to worry about. So I really hope that um, he takes that into consideration and voices like more concrete ideas and plans. Thank you. Thanks for calling. We'll go to a Democratic caller next. Nick joins us from Tyler, Texas. Hi, Nick. Hi, how are you today? Just great. Uh, I haven't heard nothing said about Trump being in service or anything, and what service did he serve in? Well, I, Donald Trump did not serve in the military. He did go to a military school as a, uh, as a young man, but did not serve in the military service itself. What, is, is Donald Trump your candidate, or do you, do you, prefer, no, do you not, prefer someone else? Not yet. I prefer Hillary Clinton, really, but... I like, I'm listening to Trump, and he's sounding good, but I don't like the law in uh, Mexico. All right, thanks for calling to Corbin, Kentucky, next. An independent caller, is it Ava? Yes. Go ahead, Ava, you're on the air. Uh, yeah, I watched this documentary last month on direct TV channels. I forget which one it was, but it was a documentary or a biography of Donald Trump. 
and on his his said he was sued for discrimination in the nineteen seventies. And on the biography or documentary, whatever it was, anyway, it said it had his mother on there, and she said that he would not be a good president. Said that he didn't like people to tell him what to do. He didn't like to uh, know for an answer. And he liked everything his own way. Anyway, uh, it also said that he had hired a lawyer to work for him in the documentary. That they had worked for the mob. So anyway, he talks about his schools, his fancy schools he went to and everything. But to me, he didn't learn no grammar because he sounds like somebody comes straight out of the Godfather. You know, like somebody that was raised on the streets as a parent. So, anyway, that's all I got to say. I just wish people would open their ears up and take off their rose-colored glasses and really listen to this man. Thanks for calling. Sharon in Mason, Michigan, a Republican caller. What did you think of Donald Trump today, Sharon? I thought he was great as usual. And I just wanted to let him know that uh, with Donald Trump in the White House, I know that my great-grandchildren, Ariana and Colt, will be able to be safe and grow up in the America I grew up in. And my brother, a Marine Vietnam vet, will actually start getting the care he deserves. And uh, I know together we can make this America great again, and I'm Trump all the way. That's it. Thanks for calling. The uh, Iowa caucuses just uh, a week and a day away. Donald Trump campaigning there. Of course, uh, Iowa used to weather that uh, we got here in the nation's capital over the last couple of days. Here's a look at the uh, White House, uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, still uh, snowed in. The uh, blizzard has come to an end, but the uh, dig out begins upwards of uh, two feet in the nation's capital, three and over in some outlying areas. Uh, also, uh, this uh, tweet we got, if we can show it uh, from Capitol Hill, the, uh, there you go, the uh, look at Capitol Hill today uh, via Twitter where folks are sledding. You, you may recall that over the last couple of years the Capitol Police were enforcing a technical ban on sledding on the Capitol grounds, but uh, when Congress passed the omnibus spending bill, the $1.1 trillion omnibus, they put language in there basically telling the Capitol Police to lay off and uh, to not enforce uh, that rule. So the sledders are back out on the uh, grounds of the nation's capital today. Let's go back to your calls. Ted joins us from Afton, Tennessee, a Democratic caller. Your thoughts on Donald Trump, Ted? Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, Donald Trump would make a nice president. It's about time we get somebody in there that cares for us old folk. You know, I'm a baby boomer, and uh, I'm on Social Security right now, and the way it looks, uh, they're about to let Social Security just go under. I think Donald Trump will bring us out of it, and I think he'd be the best man. These other people can't open their minds up and find out something, you know, that we're just going to go down the pot with everything else. All right, thanks for calling. Wendy in Schuylkill Haven, Pennsylvania, an independent caller. Go ahead, Wendy, you're on. Hi, I'm just calling because I want people to realize with Donald Trump, um, I support him only because the man was really smart when um, he decided to pull out of New Jersey because of them legalizing the casinos in all the other states. He was actually smart pulling out of there because they, he was going to lose money in Jersey at that time, so he pulled out before he could lose anything. That man didn't lose anything. So I just wanted to remind people of that, how smart he is and how on top of everything he is. Thanks for calling. Across the country to California, Sharon joins us on the Republican line. Yes, good morning. Hi. Uh, I am for Donald Trump. I think he's our best candidate. He is going to do a lot for this country, and he's going to pull the purse strings, and that's what we need. We spend too much money overseas. We don't take care of our own, and we haven't taken care of our vets, and he's going to do it. Thanks for calling. Stephanie in Waukegan, Illinois, Democratic Viewpoint. So what do you think of Donald Trump, Stephanie? Hi. I just basically I wanted to look at this program today to basically see what people see in Donald Trump. I didn't hear anything of substance in his speech. All he spoke about is his money. 
his hate for Ted Cruz and what he's going to do here and what he's going to do there. He's going to be like a bull in a china shop. And he's got to realize he's got to go through the Senate and the Congress. He's got to go through all these people. You can't get a bill passed. What do you think Obama is going through? It is a shame that people just, they have, like someone said, they have on these rose-colored glasses, and it is hate, basically, and I am an African-American woman. It is hate, basically, because we have an African-American president, and no one wants to work with him. And they said that in the beginning. That's how the Tea Party began. So I just... He he needs to put some substance to his speeches. I have voted Republican before. My um my um one of our people in uh, where I live is a Republican, and she is my older woman, and I voted for her. But it's just basically there's no substance in his speech. It's hate how much he has about his planes, and nothing about how he's going to help student loans. Nothing about Social Security. Uh, What about his tax plan? Let's see it. Put it out there so we can see it. It's all he's preaching is on fear. That's all he's preaching, fear. And I do uh, support the Second Amendment. I don't want anyone to take my rights away because I will be carrying a gun. But you know what? I don't want him as our president because he would be a disaster. We would be the laughing stock of the world because he would... Oh, sorry, Stephanie, cut off your last word there. Apologize for that. Thanks for calling. Uh, Donald Trump in Iowa today at the uh, Muscatine High School. The Iowa caucus is just a week and a day away. And let's go to a caller from Iowa on the Republican line. Keith joins us from Des Moines. Yes, hello. Uh, I was wondering when and where this caucus is going to be in Iowa. When and where what caucus is going to be? The, the caucuses uh, in general? Yes. Well, there's caucuses all over the state. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I just wondered where I need to show up to. Well, I, I, just go to this <laughs> I, I don't, to? gotcha. I don't personally have that information, but I'd suggest you check the uh, Des Moines Register website or any number of uh, sources uh, in your uh, city of Des Moines there. I'm sure there's plenty of resources to find the uh, nearest caucus where you can participate. Did you watch Donald Trump today? Yes, I did, and I'm going to vote for Donald. Okay. Th- thanks for calling, Keith. Steve in Raleigh, North Carolina, on the line for independence. Go ahead. What, what, what a call from your last caller, Carl. I mean, the guy doesn't even, he's not even smart enough to know where the caucuses are. Stephanie made some good points as well. I want to tell you that I am Donald Trump all the way, and let me tell you why, right? Um, Donald Trump, the, 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 the monster that the Republican Party created 30 years ago is now devouring them. And the thing I like about Trump, I must be honest with you, is that if he, if he goes any further than Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, if he continues to be a contender, he's going to do to the Republican Party exactly what needs to be done, and that's give it a big, gigantic fleet enema. He's going to flush it out, hopefully all of the idiots in... All right, we'll move, uh, move on uh, to Annie now in South San Francisco, California, Democratic caller. Go ahead, Annie. I am really confused as to what all of these callers heard today when Trump spoke. I listened hard, as I always do, whether he's, you know, on the debate um, or whether he's at a caucus. And what I hear is primarily him promoting hate. Where is the substance in his speeches? I have been waiting time and time again to hear what his specific plans are for the American people. Today alone, all I heard him address um, was, you know, his idea of what he would, what we should do in regards to the Iranians, Um, which, you know, his statement that in 48 hours he guarantees they'd be calling us um, and we wouldn't give them the money that we promised them. I mean, it's ridiculous. We as American people need to really listen. He's promoting hate through fear. And this really has to end. Our country is going to be in a very bad place. And Annie, let me read let, between the lines. Let me ask you a question. You said you weren't getting specifics, you weren't getting details. What do you think the draw is then for Donald Trump if, if he's I not think offering the, draw the details? Is the hype. I think that, you know, he's great at celebrity, right? He's great at uh, he knows what he's doing in terms of 
how to get people riled up into believing whatever it is he's trying to sell. It's just hype. But where is the substance? What specifically has he presented in any debate, even today, in terms of, okay, this is what I'm going to do for the American people, or for, let's just start with uh, Medicare. This is exactly what we're going to do to save Medicare or Social Security, or to help with our young people to ensure that they get education like his children were able to get. And as far as the fact that he makes that he has, um, hasn't had to borrow any money from anyone. People wake up. He's rich. And why are we making excuses for someone who did go bankrupt in this country and, and, and use that service, okay, that is provided by the government for people uh, during hardship? He used it, what, three times? I mean, I think four times? I mean, really, we have to wake up as a, as a people and realize that he's just hype. That's all it is. It's hype. What, what is he going to do for us? Th thanks for calling, Annie. Uh, we have time for one more call. It looks like Byron in Monroe, North Carolina, on the line for Republicans. Hi, Byron. Yeah, great. I'm glad I got in. I'd like to say that uh, I am a former Democrat, and Trump is the reason I am a Republican. I um, had several replies to people one about the executive orders um, every one of those in my opinion and according to what I understand about the Constitution is illegal um, I don't understand what the big deal is about defining each and every aspect down to the, the finest detail he's given a general broad stroke of the things that are going to happen there's a lot of consulting and detail work that has to be finished out in order to implement it, which will come in the future. The thing is that we have put up with and endured all of the things we have for several decades, and that's not who we are. We're Americans at our very core and we need to see the things that were in effect 225 years ago and Trump is the keystone to that happening. Thanks for the call, Byron. Uh, one thing uh, I failed to mention when we were showing you those uh, outside shots of uh, uh, Washington, D.C., the House announced today that it will be out of session all next week, there's a, a look at the uh, north side of the Capitol. Uh, you can see uh, pretty snowed in here in Washington, D.C. The House will not be in session. Uh, it was already uh, planning a short week uh, to allow for a Democratic uh, retreat at the end of the week, but now uh, they've decided to cancel the sessions for the entire week due to snow. Thanks to all our callers. Uh, by the way, uh, again, a reminder, the Iowa caucuses, a week from tomorrow, will have live coverage here on C-SPAN, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday, February 1st. It begins our uh, coverage at 8 o'clock here on C-SPAN. We'll take you to a Republican caucus, and at 8 o'clock uh, Eastern Time over on C-SPAN 2, we'll uh, take you to a Democratic caucus to let you see how the whole process actually works in Iowa with the caucuses. And, of course, the New Hampshire primary, then uh, a week beyond that on uh, February 9th. Now, though, on C-SPAN, we're going to show you...